and the children of light we will not sleep in jesus name because it is when the men slept the enemy came and sowed tears in the field when the pastors sleep when the leaders sleep when the leaders say mm, me i don't want trouble and they go to sleep and they don't look at anything anymore they don't supervise anything anymore and they don't check anything they don't correct anything anymore and they become like the people the canaanites afraid of the day and they're not even coming out in the day anymore because they're afraid they say they don't want anybody to see them they only want to come out in the night when men sleep that's when enemies come and so tears in the church in this church our leadership is awake and we're not sleeping and that's why any little thing will say no take nothing out of that place should not be there and when we see any worldliness coming in and any evil coming in and any kind of uh, you know stain coming we'll say no this should not be here that's why we, we every time we're opening the word of god and it is light in our pathway and we're not sleeping we're not sleeping anybody sleeping here i'm awake are you awake and we have the eyes of the eagle, sharp-sighted. And we say, I recognize that there, it wasn't, that's not holiness, that's not sanctification, that, that's not purity. Take that thing out of that place. And it is those who awake that do that. And then you live the life of the sanctified. And you radiate that sanctified, holy, pure life. You will do it, I will do it, we will do it together. It says in number six, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Let us, but let us who are of the day. Anybody of the day here today? We are. God bless every one of you. But let us go up the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation jump down to verse uh, to verse 15 see that none render evil for evil unto any man those who are in the dark that's what they do when they suspect that somebody has hurt them maybe you have not even hurt them but they suspect that somebody is planning something against them be they say, before he touches me i must touch him before he catches me i must catch him and therefore they render evil for supposed evil but it says those of us who are in the light the life of the saints and the life of the sanctified let nobody render evil for evil unto anyone and but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men and then it says in verse 18 in everything what do you do give thanks in everything give thanks in everything give th in everything give thanks and you know I, i've been looking in verse 18 in everything what do you do give thanks in everything give thanks in everything give th in everything give thanks you know, I, I've been looking at the life of Joseph and, and that man. You know, people who did not understand Joseph would have said, you know, can anybody give thanks in this situation? And I'm talking to Joseph and I'm saying, Joseph, are you happy? Joseph said, of course. <laughs> yeah. How do you, uh, why are you happy? Because I thought your brother said, here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see what will become of his dream. Are you still happy? Yes, I am. Why are you happy? Because when I got to them, instead of killing me, they only sold me. Think about that. That the great evil thing they wanted to do, they didn't even go to that extent of killing me. They only sold me. But aren't you unhappy that they sold you? No, I'm not unhappy. Why are you not unhappy? Because they sold me to where my dream will be fulfilled. They helped me. They paid my transportation. And I got to the place where my dream will be fulfilled free of charge. I'm so young, I'll be looking for money. How do I get money to get to the place where my dream will be fulfilled? And before I got the money, they just gave me free transportation. You know, the interpretation of what, whatever happens in your life as a child of God is the interpretation that makes you to be gloomy or to be glorious, to be sad or to be glad. You are glad. 
I said you are glad. And then he got, he became a slave. And then he was in 40 pastors. I said, Joseph, come. Are you still happy? Yes, I'm happy. Why are you happy? I'm getting some administrative training. You know, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to university. And when I get to the place I'm going to get to, I'll need a lot of knowledge on administration. And I wouldn't have learned that administration if I didn't come to this and see some things I never saw. I'm learning some things I never learned. And it is preparing me for the place. It's the interpretation that makes the man to remain in the light and then eventually the uh, wife of Potiphar you know did something and told something against uh, Joseph what was that a lie a lie against uh, Joseph and now the soul they got Joseph into into prison and I said now Joseph you've had it now you must be sad I said Joseph are you sad he says no I'm not sad why are you not sad he said don't you know the culture of these Egyptians my father is not here my mother is not here I don't have any identity card for this nation I'm just a slave over here when that woman told the man what should the man have done the man should have killed me for wanting to defile his wife. But, and nobody will ask any question. In fact, my father thought I'm dead already. And my brothers thought, you know, I'm gone already. If he had killed me, where would I be? I'm just so grateful to God that that man never killed me. He only sent me to the prison. You can always be joyful. You can always give thanks. I said you can give thanks. But now, Joseph, you are a prisoner. And that stigma of being a prisoner will remain in your life forever. Ah, don't talk like that. There are many kinds of prison. There is a low dungeon prison. There is a common prison. And there is a prison for the servants of the king. And see where they sent me to? They sent me to the prison of the well-to-do people. VIP prison. That's why they sent me to what do you think i will be sad <laughs> praise the lord you can give thanks in everything that's what i'm telling you and if they didn't send me to that prison where the servants of pharaoh where they were how will i come out of that place to interpret the dream unto pharaoh you see and then now he saw those two people they were sad he said why are you sad they said we have dream and we have nobody to interpret to me i'm an interpreter and because god is with me tell me and then they told him he interpreted their dreams after interpreting their dreams the dreams the interpretation was to feel just like that then he told one he said what remember me Re you're going out when you get to pharaoh remember me and then first week forgotten second week forgotten one year forgotten one and a half years forgotten joseph can you give thanks yes i can why are you giving thanks the man did not remember you ah, ah. if that man remembered me after one year before pharaoh had his dream they just released me into nothingness into poverty they released me into the street no accommodation nothing upon my life but it was when pharaoh had a dream they remembered me at the right time god will remember you at the right time never 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 be so sorrowful look at this happening to me look at this happening always give thanks you can always give thanks and eventually now at the right time that man said i remember they will remember they will remember you at the right time and then they brought him out he came before pharaoh he interpreted the dream and then pharaoh said can we find any other person in this whole land in the whole nation this is the man he'll be next he'll be my prime minister and then they promoted him and now that's why that's when people become happy that's when people become happy but in the case of joseph he was happy all the way through every day he was happy every event he was happy everything that happened he was happy because he knew everything happening stage after stage will lead you to that high mountain yeah. and you will get there in jesus name
and so that's why it says come back to first thessalonians chapter 5 now and look at verse and look at verse 18 in everything give thanks is that possible yes it's possible for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you quench not the spirit despise not prophesies prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from all appearance of evil and then in verse 23 and the very god of peace sanctify you holy the lord will sanctify you Look up, brothers and sisters. There are people that struggle with sanctification. They say, I, I want to be sanctified. They're trying to sanctify themselves. Trying to sanctify themselves. But it says, it's the Lord that will sanctify you. No matter how dirty your pledge may be, you may not be able to wash it clean, but the Almighty God knows how to clean up that pledge. And no matter how dirty your clothes might be, you may not have the soap or the detergent to make it white as what I no, but the almighty god has the detergent the blood of jesus christ to make that cloth as white as snow all you need to do is come to the lord and say lord i cannot cleanse this one by myself i cannot wash this one by myself i cannot sanctify this by myself do it for me and the lord will do it and the very god of peace sanctify you holy and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ faithful is he that calleth you will he do it who yes. also will do it your light will shine yes. in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 first peter chapter 2 we're reading from verse 9 but she are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light he has called us out of darkness and we're not going to be in darkness anymore our light is going to our life is going to radiate the life of the sanctified in jesus name in philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 3 i'm reading to verse 5 philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 3 to verse 5 let nothing be done through strife of vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves let each esteem other better than themselves look up brothers and sisters you know why people struggle for something because they think if i don't struggle everybody will pass me and they will go ahead of me and then i will be the last on the queue and i will not have what i ought to have don't ever think like that don't ever ever think like that just give the other people chance let them go if they want to go let them take it if you want to take it let them possess it if you want to possess it. don't struggle about anything because the lord is looking at you if you are patient if you are lowly if you are gentle if you follow after the path of christ where you ought to be you will still go ahead of all those people that are on you you'll get ahead of them look at jesus christ and see how he made himself a servant and then it appears that pilate was ahead of him it appeared that herod was ahead of him it appeared that even judas is carried got to places he couldn't get to it appeared that everybody was much ahead they had authority but look at it now jesus christ after he died on the cross of calvary he was buried for three days and then he rose again is now given a name above every name that at the mention of the name of jesus every knee should bow did herod ever think that this baby born in bethlehem was greater than himself he never thought like that did pilate ever think that this person in front of him he said i'm asking you a question and you're not answering me don't you know i have the power to put you to death and the power to release you you know pharaoh thought he was higher than jesus christ where is pharaoh today where is pilate today where is herod today all those people that think they were higher where are they today but look at jesus in every nation of the world his name brings light and salvation everywhere 
And yet, he didn't make himself of any sin, of any reputation. And that's why the Lord is saying, don't struggle for anything. Let the Lord himself promote you like he promoted the Lord Jesus Christ. And it will come in Jesus' name. Let nothing be done through strife for being glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem all the better than themselves. Look not every man on the things of on the on, on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Just have the mind of Christ. Don't struggle, don't fight, and don't campaign for anything. Don't put pressure on anybody. Make me this, and make me that, and give me this, and give me that. He said, look at Jesus. Have the mind of Christ in you. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of what? No reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore this way it comes now here is the promotion here is the exaltation if you are not fighting for anything you are not struggling for anything you are not running after anything you just have the mind of christ wherefore god also has highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father I pray that will be done in our lives and then it tells us in verse, in verse 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings, no debate, no argument, no fighting, no struggling, no gossip, no biting, no running other people down and building up ourselves. No, we can't do that anymore. We're not walking in the light. In verse 15, that she may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You will not run in vain, and you will not labor in vain. Point number three, we're looking at restoring lives through spirit-filled saints. I said before, and I'm saying that again, everything you have lost, everything will come back. Yeah. Everything, everything in a better shape, in a better form, you're going to have them in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're looking at we're looking at uh, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. I'm reading to you from verse 14. Luke chapter 1, verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. Yeah. And many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. The Lord wants to fill us with the Holy Ghost. You'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. The power from on high will come upon your life. And when that happens, many of the children of Israel shall return to the Lord their God. God. The Lord will use the power of the Holy Ghost in your life and make you a soul winner, a great evangelist and you'll turn many people to the Lord in Jesus name. And he shall go before him in the spirit and in the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The Lord is going to use you to prepare other people. Prepare them for blessing. And prepare them for Christian experiences and prepare them for the coming of the Lord. You will be a shining light and you will be a burning light. Like John the Baptist, the glory of the Lord will shine in your life. In John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 35. John chapter 5, verse 35. He was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. The Lord has made us the light and we're not going to allow darkness to come back again. And then as we go back home and we go everywhere, 
that light will spread it abroad. That gospel will preach it everywhere. It tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, reading from verse 4, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad, what happened to them? They went everywhere. What were they doing? No more gossiping, only preaching. No more backbiting, only preaching. No more angry outbursts, only preaching. And no more defaming other people, defiling other people, only preaching. They were scattered abroad. And all the negative language in their mouth before everything was gone. Everything they said in darkness before, they said, we're now in the light. We're saved, we're sanctified, and we're filled with the Holy Ghost. And because of that Holy Ghost baptism upon our lives, all the things we're doing before, they let all the non-essentials, they concentrated now on the essentials in. And what they did was everywhere.